So continuing with uh, chapter three, um, in this chapter, we're actually going to talk about uh, some early Nazi parapsychological uh, research, uh, specifically touching on one topic, which is remote viewing. Uh, what remote viewing is, is um, as we get into this, but a brief explanation, um, remote viewing is the ability to see remotely somewhere at a distance where you are non-local. Uh, what that means is the U.S. Army um, had a special program after learning about this from the Soviets where they would train soldiers to uh, spy on Soviet uh, research areas or Soviet troop movements just by through um, ESP, basically, telepathy. So first, the first we want to get to the Nazi precursors to all this, which was later taken to the Soviet Union and to the United States. Um, to get started, uh, we basically have to start with um, the most famous parapsychological researcher that, that the uh, Nazis had. His name was Hans Bender. He was also a member of the SS Enernabri, the scientific arm of the Nazi SS. After graduation, uh, in 1925, he first studied law in Lausanne and Paris. In, 20, in 1927, he transferred to the study of, of psychology, philosophy, and romance languages in Freiburg, Heidelberg, and Berlin. Uh, from 1929, he studied in Bonn with Erich Rothaker, who was a psychologist, Ernest, and Ernst Robert Curtius uh, in romance studies. Now, after the seizure of power of the National Socialists, he was a 1933 short-term member of the Stormtroopers, the SA. That same year, he was a, uh, at Rothaker. With the, he uh, presented the dissertation which, in what is known as psychic automatism. Uh, parallel to his position as assistant professor at the Psychological Institute of the University of Bonn, Bender was disabled and, and not able to serve in the military, so he became a professor at the University of Bonn. Now, in 1932, Hans Bender started experimenting uh, with something that's known as automatic spelling. Um, automatic spelling is kind of when... It's really hard to uh, explain, but I guess you could Google it. Um, but from 1932 and 1933, at the Psychological Institute of Bonn, uh, under Rothaker, uh, he published his PhD in 1936, and this was uh, on psychic automatisms. In an interesting development as a student with Kurt Berenger at Bonn University, and this is really interesting, he participated in studies on mescaline. And later we'll, re we'll talk about this when we start talking about uh, post-World War II developments at uh, Camp King in Germany, which was run by the, by, um, the Army and the CIA, uh, and studied uh, interrogation techniques. So Bender is experimenting with mescaline, uh, which were later, which were a focal point of later pharmacological searches for truth serum and interrogations, notably with the German CIA program that I just mentioned. Now, interestingly, he does intersect with a Leipzig uh, researcher whose name was Jainch. Bender and Jainch intersect as Jainch wrote the preface to a work of Bender's on parapsychology in 1936. In 1939, Bender completed a medical degree, which should give him a greater reputation in view of his controversial research interests, like parapsychology is not um, viewed as being very scientific. Uh, there's a lot of um, maybe disinformation or suppression related to parapsychological research. For his assertion that after his medical state examination and his license in Freiburg in 1939, he wrote a thesis, The Working Curve Under Pervitin. Now, Pervitin is what the German name for methamphetamines was uh, in, with Kurt Berenger. He also wrote of starting a parapsychological institute, uh, and this was done in conjunction with the SSN and Abbey, inviting psychics to participate in 1939. After the war, Hans Bender was detained, but subsequently released. He was never charged with anything. He was just like a, a professor, basically. I mean, you're not going to really send him to prison. In 1950, he established the Institute for Fringe Areas of Psychology and Mental Health at the University of Freiburg, which is in uh, southeast Germany, near the Swiss border, uh, and also near France. Uh, this was in 1950. 
Uh, from 1942 to 44, he taught at the Paracelsus Institute studying extrasensory perception or telepathy or telekinesis, uh, various terms for this. Um, interestingly, after the war, he maintained a correspondence with someone we're going to read about who was the instrumental um, person behind remote viewing research in the Nazi regime. His name was Captain Hans Roder. And he headed up the secret early remote viewing program of the German Navy in Berlin. We shall examine uh, their correspondences uh, after this. But another development of interest in his work in 1966 with physicist Burkhard Heim, again trying to figure out a physical explanation for telepathy, telekinesis, and, and all the things considered parapsychological, uh, or what is known as fringe science, uh, he hoped to engage in a physical explanation for certain psychic phenomena, most notably transcommunication, which is um, telepathy. Um, Bender engaged several physicists in pursuit of a physical explanation, such as uh, a German-American named Roll. Um, he also exchanged um, information with the German um, physicist Pasquale Jordan, who was one of the founders of who also explained through physics the uh, telepathy and how uh, remote influencing worked. Interestingly, in the development of the Gans field, now the Gans field, um, w which becomes important in terms of getting people into a trance state, but he conducted a national experiment on German television to measure people's psychic abilities through, um, and this was known as television telepathy. <laughs> and this was in 1968. But the original research was conducted in the 1930s. It should also be noted that in 1967, he was contracted by the U.S. National Security Agency to conduct experiments regarding psychic phenomena. And we have a document here from the, uh, the NSA archives, which you can see here if we can get it to settle on that. There we go. So... Hans Bender here is on this experiment uh, what was going on they kept uh, coming across at this one army base um, phones kept ringing and automatic fuses blown um, neon lights were blacking out the movement of a 400 pound storage cabinet uh, pictures were swinging around and there was a frequent electronic dialing of the number zero one one nine. Now, involved in this experiment were, were several scientists, but the parapsychologist and psychiatrist that the NSA contracted for this work was Dr. Hans Bender. Uh, we'll, we will get some more into, you know, some of this um, quantum mechanical explanations for these phenomena, but it's interesting to note that the NSA was contracting with him in Germany. Um, now to get to Nazi remote viewing, um, as, as mentioned earlier, the German Navy had a prototypical remote viewing program under the leadership of Captain Hans Roeder, who previously had served on submarines. To take a step back, it, it is important to look at the historical development and attitudes towards parapsychological research in Germany. Uh, one of the first Germans to study psychic affairs was Rudolf Tischner, uh, who died in 1961. He was originally an ophthalmologist, revisiting the eyes to psychic research. He practiced in Munich. He published on telepathy and other side effects. Uh, in 1921, in a monograph, uh, Telepathy und Helsen, Tischner called telepathy and clairvoyance um, extrasensory perception. Ausen Sinkler Warnemung. <laughs> Sorry about the pronunciation. A description of, of one of his experiences is on a strong parallel and even perhaps the prototype for the format of the U.S. military trained remote viewer program where um, what they would do is they would put coordinates inside uh, white envelopes that the remote viewer could never see then tell them to focus on those coordinates. Uh, in the Tischner experiment, they would put things in white envelopes um, and they would uh, try to identify what that was. Uh, Basically, a description here, Tishner's experimental description, these experiments involved selected participants in identifying the targets, typically text or drawings, concealed in opaque envelopes, while unlike a telepathy experiment, 
No persons were aware of the contents of the envelope. Uh, telepathy was used early in the German police investigations, according to one researcher named Vernet uh, in 2013. Their study, its interest to its interest to official government offices were not limited to police investigations. During the war, a special debar- department developed in German, German naval intelligence to investigate translocation, or remote viewing as it's known, of enemy ships. The staff of this department developed out of earlier occult scientists. The organization, this organization was founded in 1919 as the German Occultish Society under the chairmanship of physicist and, and mason Dr. Vernon Werner Hocken, who led until 1923 when it was renamed the German Society for Scientific Occultism. Its vice president was a scientist of interest and a member of the Special Navy Department, later known as the SP Department, or the Side Reel Pendle Department. Uh, his name was Lieutenant Colonel A.D. Conrad Shoup, who was the recruiter for staff for the department, such as who we read about later, Gerhard, Gerhard Walter, Understandably, the department was recruited from membership of the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Wissenschaftlichen Occultismus. Uh, the military interest in occult studies is also attested to in that Schuppe also briefed the Third Army Corps' general command on occult sciences. In 1939, the society changed to the German Metaphysical, Metaphysical Society. At this time, Schuppe was interested in Gansfeld or Earth's radiations, electromagnetism, and dowsing or remote location of water. Theoretically, feeling the weak electromagnetic fields of water in comparison to solid earth. Another member of the S. Sidereal Pendle Department was the chemist Dr. Fritz Quaid. Um, it's important to note, it's important to put developments in, in parapsychology in a historical context at this time. Shortly before the founding of the SD Department in 1942, it was banned in the Reich to practice in any way occultism things. This developed out of a suspicion that occult practitioners had steered Hess to go to Great Britain in an effort to forming a German-British fascist alliance, or peace, allegedly with Lord Hamilton, a British occultist and Nazi sympathizer. In response to this development of Hess being captured, the Gestapo banned all occultish practices. At this time, Shupi and Quaid were arrested for several months. However, the military became interested in this research, as well as Heinrich Himmler. Another member of the SP department was Dr. Hans Hermann Kritzinger, who was an astronomer. He founded the German Association for Solar Observations, previously employed by the Air Force and Army Weapons Office for ballistic studies. In 1940, he was working for the Propaganda Ministry ministry after Goebbels became interested in the prophecies of Nostradamus about the downfall of England in the end times and wanted to use it as propaganda. Uh, Kritzinger had written about these prophecies, so it was a person of interest to Goebbels as one who claimed to specialize in dowsing. He became of interest to the military work with the side reel pendle department. Uh, one of the most renowned persons researching dowsing and pendle was that of Ludwig uh, Straniak, who in 1936 started the Society for Scientific Pendulum Research, Gesellschaft für Wissenschaftliche Pendelforschung, which was dedicated to the National Socialist cause. He believed in uh, eight great forces. Um, uh, Heim believed in six great forces in the universe. He, um, he wrote a book on pendle techniques. Uh, this book was called Das Seidrisch Pendel als Indicator der Ochten Naturkraft. Uh, that was written in 1937. In one chapter of this book, uh, written by Arnold Mannlicher, um, Biological Radiation or uh, Biologische Strahlenforschung und Elektrotechnik, the belief in polar coordinate system is presented, and this is very similar to the concept of Alvin Waves that Norsin talks about. We'll get into Alvin waves later it's a uh, physical theory of electromagnetism or a grid of electromagnetism that exists in, in uh, the universe it was also claimed to be able to use the pendle for diagnosis in the human body for um, diagnosing disease but we'll skip over that right now um, one of the things that um, basically the difference between a human body that he believed and a regular um, dipole is that the human body is not a dipole but has six polarities uh, that run um, 
northwest and south uh, east southwest all these um, different directions but uh, um, I'm gonna skip over this a little bit here but the six uh, since the organism of man, uh, man in each of the six axes of a spacious coordinate system north south west east and deep to high is unbalanced and polarized in positive or negative senses. Uh, the, the orientation with the jerk to the north and the face to the south and that reconfiguring. So basically there are um, eight different axes groups according to him. Uh, Manlicher was a Swiss physician that believed that the earth radiated as related to radionics which we'll uh, talk about when we start talking about John Norsin and that this earth radiation interfered with human health as we know electromagnetism does indeed interfere with cell health this would later be related to the natural earth electromagnetic field and gravity as gravity is different in different areas of the earth uh, due to like mountains and different densities within the earth's crust we have uh, fluctuations in the strength of the gravity field of the earth uh, indeed, Hitler himself believed in these theories, as related by Kurlander. Hitler himself employed diviners to check the Reich Chancellery for cancer-causing death rays. A uh, German researcher named Kurlander was uh, looking into that. Um, I'm going to skip over how to do the Pendle coordinate system, but basically he was hired... Um, Straniak was hired by the SP department to teach regular soldiers how to do this which also pre uh, sages uh, the u.s army's department in remote viewing so with this understanding we can better put the work of the sb department into a historical and scientific background and understanding where these beliefs originated from the sp department operated under a top secret rubric another member of the team who later quit was gerda walter um, she notes in her letter regarding ESP in the German Navy uh, that was uh, that I got from Hans Bender's um, Institute in Freiburg that she was not allowed to refer to the head of the department, Captain Hans Roeder, as Captain, just Mr. Roeder. They didn't want to refer to anybody by military terms because it was top secret. Another member, the astrologer Wolf, claims that the activities there had been strictly confidential and that the staff members had been under the impression of being constantly supervised or constantly under watch. Um, the career of Captain Hans Roeder began in World War I as a U-boat commander. He became an engineer after the war, uh, publishing a book called The Technical Computing uh, in 1933. Uh, in 1939, he returned to active duty as a Navy captain assigned as a general consultant for the Inventions and Patent Office of the Navy Main Weapons Office. And there's an interesting uh, thing that we'll come across again with the German physicist Pasquale Jordan, who later in the war was also assigned to the same office. And I don't know, I haven't found any evidence of Hans Roeder and Pasquale Jordan um, exchanging letters or talking with each other. But their, their understanding of parapsychological phenomena is very close to each other's. Interestingly, he was a self-ascribed channeler at what was termed commuting or uh, clairvoyance. Um, he initially called this research, the Navy Intelligence Service supported research on optical location. An invisible active locational method was supposed to be developed. Um, it was later named the side reel pendle program he reported to admiral raider who was chief of naval operations others with knowledge of the program were formal free corps and marine group eberhardt member admiral otto schneiwind and a rear admiral gerhard wagner from 1941 to, to 44 chief of the operations department in the naval high command uh, he reminisces about the work of Captain Roeder. Uh, Roeder, the commuter, was known to all of us. His work was, from the point of view, not so unusual. After all, one constantly thought about new techniques, and when now someone came, uh, came who declared that he could achieve something by a certain method, then, of course, it was natural that they gave him the opportunity. Um, the structure of the German naval research of the time is interesting and related by Anton. About the exact date of construction of the special group in the Kriegsmarine, the corresponding establishment decisions and their justification as well as the organizational framework conditions are still little known. 
So far, no relevant documents and sources on these issues. That's how we stay in that's how we stay in some places of necessity, rely on assumptions. Most of the following detailed information comes from retrospective eyewitness accounts and are accordingly to judge critically. If we follow the remarks of Greta Walter and Wilhelm Wolf existed the SP division in the spring of 1942. When both first heard about her, Greta Walter, um, they... The other available risks suggest emergence uh, around the year 1940. I'm sorry, this is a machine translation of German, so. Uh, who gave the order to set up the experimental group? Who was informed and who was the driving force behind the experiments with the, with the naval line? However, this must remain unclear in the current source situation. Wolf mentions that at least the fleet chief admiral, Otto, Otto Schneewind, who was a member, of Free Corps member of Marine Group Eberhard, which is the Black Reichswehr, which were deployed to the Baltics to stir up trouble there, was informed about the experiments. On the other hand, it can be proven that the coordination of the pendulum locomotion tests and naval intelligence lay in the naval warfare. In cooperation with the MND, the Naval Weapons Main Office, and there the General Office worked for Invention and Patent, Patenting, the Inventions and Patents Office, in their trials. Um, the border, uh, here's the, the exact positioning, um, the border scientific working group, it's not really um, understood very well, but the Naval Intelligence Service had 1942 several working groups on the topic of vibration research for the submarine war, launched in which also the Patent Department of the Navy was also involved in the special border scientific research in the context of one of these working groups of the MND but there are no clear evidence about the work of the General Department, Inventions and Patents, and the Naval Weapons Main Office. There is almost no information left. With the effect from 1 September 1942, this department became Division 4 in the new office known as Research Inventions, Inventions Patent Administration. The new FEP, headed by Rear Admiral Wilhelm Rhein, now comprised four departments, General Research Control, Research Organization and Reporting, uh, Research Division, and Inventions and Patenting. The Bureau should answer all questions. The Bureau should answer all questions for the Navy research. Inventions and the patent system can provide exhaustive information, maintain contacts with research centers, and intensify marine research in general. Their establishment was in response to the increasingly lossy and dogged, uh, the increasing uh, loss of submarines, which the German Navy put to the efforts and research and de development of the same topic, uh, actually by the British. They believe the British had already developed this. Uh, in 1943, the, the uh, OMS group as an extremely large apparatus with a variety of supervised scientific and technical research projects occupied a huge effort with numerous supervised internal and external projects. In 1943 alone, around 1,000 research tasks were fulfilled. In 1943, uh, the Patents and Inventions Department processed around 13,000 applications for new, new developments. Uh, in, in 1942, um, I'm sorry, we'll skip over that. But um, basically, what happened and why it's so hard to find these documentations is that um, Rear Admiral Wilhelm Rhein had on 22 December 1943 reported that all the files in the house were destroyed by the fire. They bombed this place. This information is confirmed by a later report of March 27, 1944, as it is almost one year had been uh, since the bombing. Um, this is why we don't really know much about it, because all the documents were bombed. This is a problem with all research regarding Germany in World War II. Uh, with the almost total destruction of Germany, Germany during the war and the self-destruction of important research records, it is almost untraceable to find documentation on these secret programs. Gerda Walter and Wolf's accounts are the main sources of information on this project. As stated above, the project was begun because the Germans felt that they had fallen behind what they believed to be a British optical location project. Captain Roeder held this belief, although it would later turn out that the main cause of the uptick in search sinking of German naval vessels was actually uh, Turg's team 
in Britain working on cracking the Enigma with the bomb computer. Um, the Enigma was a um, uh, German encryption device, and the bomb computer was a British computer that was built to crack the Enigma. And that was developed by Turing's team for uh, GCHQ, what would be eventually become GCHQ. Though it should be noted, Roeder may have been aware of the work of Harold Sherman and Sir War Roy Wilkins in Great Britain, which is really where he got this idea that the British were doing this. Thoughts through space that did remote viewing experiments for locating ships, thus being a rationale for German investigations. Uh, another interesting person working on this department project was Dr. Wilhelm Hartmann, who performed characterological or aptitude tests, as we mentioned before, um, on staff members to assign them. Although he was an astronomer in astrology, he was a member of the Tatwas team on the SP department, which study which studies the aspects of planets, which seem to be related again to Alvin waves, the man magnetic grids in the universe. Though the early staff was to be comprised of people attached to the scientific study of the occult, Captain Roeder was specifically looking for a way to train normal naval personnel to do this locational work. As noted earlier, Walter broke with this work group. The issue was the difference of opinion on what this ability really was. Captain Roeder, as a military engineer, he searched for a cause based in uh, physics, whereas Goethe Walter believed it was uh, supernatural. Um, Goethe Walter recollected that, that, but being a materialist, the Captain Roeder, he always came back to his opinion that it was essentially a problem for physics, not of psychology or parapsychology. Indeed, the stubbornness of his at the end gave me an excuse to decline working there as our views were too much apart. The cause being purely physical was investigating through other studies of the group that looked at what materials the pendle should be made of and what kind of string to, to hang the pendle from. They performed many experiments to try and bring the study into a science. In the end, the Navy saw no merit in this attempt at location, although it is claimed Straniac was able to demonstrate its use ostensibly it ended with negative results according to some uh, recollections Straniac was actually able to demonstrate that he could locate german navy ships with through this methodology another interesting perspective of Goethe was that was that of the lead that the anglo-saxon powers as she called them had in parapsychological research of the day she writes i said it would now avenge itself uh, in terms of not keeping up with the Anglo-Saxon research, it would now avenge itself physical, psychical research had been neglected to such an extent all those years compared with the Anglo-Saxon countries. It needed years of careful research whether and how ships could be detected and placed by the pendulum, and not even the very first preliminaries existed. I doubted whether they did in England or the United States, although they were far ahead of Germany in all these things. The question of what happened to this research after 1942 is a provocative one, given the SS involvement and Heinrich Himmler's personal involvement in the Thule Society. Scholars have noted, concerning an answer to the problem of the dowsing rod and the research field of radiothesia, for example, the RSHA of the SS, as well as National Socialist Leadership Circles, made increasingly increasing efforts over the course of 1942 to get a better handle on the technological foundations and possibilities. Previous to this, the SS had been involved in cultivating occult sciences to their mission, and in 1937, according to the researcher Kurlander, on Dr. Kendall's support for Werner Kittler's original and useful method in which he brought together natural scientists and astrologers in working groups in the Reich Literary Chamber and the Reich Ministry of Propaganda, the issue for the differentiation between charlatry and real scientific investigations is considered in correspondence between Himmler and his intelligence chief, Schellenberg. Um, or I'm sorry, his intelligence chief before Schellenberg, which was Heydrich, who some uh, members of the Nazi uh, SS believed he was actually assassinated for trying to create peace between uh, Germany and the British fascists. Um, from Himmler to Hedrick, for more on careful attempts by the SD and the Gestapo to, to differentiate between scientific occultism 
an occult charlatry. What this is talking about is that problem that they had banned um, all this stuff because they believed that Hess had come under remote influence. So they banned all research in Germany because they thought this might be Germans doing this. Himmler was deeply invested in occult and border scientific thinking and saw no incompatibility between actively policing commercial occultism and selectively appropriating scientific occultism. Whether for developing military technology, gathering intelligence, or making political prognoses, these differences within the upper echelons of the SS and police administration, the Gestapo, might explain why Nebe, as head of the Kripo, which is the political police of the Gestapo, proposed a middle way that preserved a space for scientific occultism while moving against every activity that rests on and exploits superstition. The new campaign against occultism also failed to dissuade Goebbels, expert for cosmobiology in the Reich Literary Chamber, Werner Kittler, from eagerly recruiting dozens of famous astrologers, uh, dosers, and cosmobiologists to study the potential benefits of various border sciences. Even the SD and the Gestapo commissioned dozens of reports and peer reviews aimed at differentiating between scientific occultism and charlatry. Himmler himself advocated this policy in a January 1939 letter to Heydrich. As you know, I do not consider astrology. Oops. As you know, I do not consider astrology to be pure humbug, but believe that there's something behind it. We must do much more to restrict charlatans, so that we only allow specific communities of research in this sphere. Uh, in beginning in September 1939, Himmler. Uh, in the beginning of 1939, Himmler, Hess, and Goebbels recruited dozens of scientific occultists to assist with, with obtaining military intelligence and producing domestic and foreign propaganda known as psychological operations. Uh, Goebbels and Himmler even compelled Kissauer to review the talents of German astrologers and pendulum dosiers, remote viewing, dowsing, the most scientific Typic of whom they hired to assist the SS and the propaganda ministry in gathering military intelligence and producing propaganda. So obviously the SS was already entangled in this research even before the Wehrmacht showed interest through such groups as naval intelligence and edge science or border science. Indeed, there is evidence that these programs were... Sorry. Indeed, there is evidence that these programs continued as noted in relation to the campaign to free Mussolini after he had been captured in Italy. Um, in 1944, the SS employed psychics to locate Mussolini. Subsequently, with their help, he was located after the secret experiments were conducted with psychics. This was known as Operation Mars. The source of this information was uh, Walter Schellenberg, Himmler's assistant. Uh, the look. The operation to locate Mussolini was conducted in what today would be defined as military remote viewing. It is disputed whether real human intelligence led to his release by German special forces led by Otto Skorzeny or whether it was intelligence from remote viewing. Skorzeny re remarked regarding the use of what um, this neurointelligence is the term that has come to be known to within the intelligence community these days, neurant that it was Himmler who said to believe in these always somewhat disputed science. I was never told about any positive results of these investigations. After the war's end, there is evidence that, that structured or organized Nazi research in ed science continued, which now brings us to another Pendle researcher, going back to Hans Bender. Uh, indeed, after 1952, Hans Bender and Captain Roeder are actually exchanging letters, and um, there are not many letters. There, I was only given two letters by Bender's Institute, which seemed to um, only exist because they might have been um, looked over or misfiled and later found again. But Captain Roeder and Hans Bender are exchanging letters after the war, and these letters are from 1952. Um, in Roeder's letter, he notes he is working on an extensive account of his work at the SP department. Uh, how, however, this work is not known to be in any public archive, or, and it was never published. Roeder, um, I'm going to skip over that, but Roeder was a, 
apparently investigating, again, characterology using color theory or FARB to diagnose, to diagnose personalities, which was directly derived from two other scientists, Metzger and Moeller. Um, he wrote to Bender on these matters, and Bender replied to him, um, it's interesting if, that in these letters they seem to be talking about other people working on similar research. We have all these old Nazis talking to each other after the war about this stuff. Um, but that's basically the gist of uh, early Nazi remote viewing. Um, so that'll bring this section to a wrap.